Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will actually talk a little bit about how I learn topics and how I recommend you should learn new topics in regards to programming. For that, we not only need to take a look at how I learn things right now, we also need to take a look at how I actually learn things when I was at the point where you are now. So in the end, I will just go from beginner to more advanced developers and give you my recommendation on how I would say you should learn new topics. So without further ado, let's actually talk about beginners and how I would suggest you as a beginner to learn Android and to learn programming in general. And that is definitely with courses. Of course, that comes from a YouTuber. I only make courses and I sell courses and stuff like that. But I'm just a really big fan of courses because they will show you the whole picture. Because let's take a look at a different thing people like to use to learn new programming concepts and that is books which I'm really not a big fan of because, well, back then when I learned programming, I often used books and I didn't really learn programming with that. So the problem was often just that in the book you see like that function that you need to put in your code somewhere. And as a beginner, you just don't know where to put this function. Like if you're more advanced, then you, you know, okay, a function belongs in a class or so. But as a beginner, you don't know that. And then you have that, that big file of code and you don't really know where to put this. If you, however, take a course on a beginner topic, and, and there are always courses for beginner topics, great courses that are also free on YouTube, then you always see where the teacher is actually putting the code. And this is a big advantage. But here's the important part. Don't just watch the courses, also work with them. So just watching a course will teach you nothing but theory, but in the end with theory, you can do anything if you don't know how to apply it. So what I mean with actually using them to actually gain that gain that practical knowledge is of course first you need to watch the course of course you need to follow through it step by step but while you do that especially in programming i would just advise you to change little things and to experiment with that so you could say okay what happens if i change this variable here what happens if i change this greater than to less than and just try out what happens if you make small changes in your code? Because that in the end tells your brain, okay, this is how the code actually behaves when I change these things. Because later on, you of course need to do this on your own. You need to know what happens when you make a specific change. But as a beginner, that might not always be obvious. So I can only recommend you to yeah, just play around with that, change things. And if you mess up, then you can always go back to the stage at uh, you're actually at in the course. However, at some point you will realize, okay, there's that very specific topic I need to build an app with, or I need to build an app around. And there's just no course about that because it's so specific. So those are typical questions I actually get like, I don't know, um, hey, Philip, can you make a video about SQL migrations for a restaurant app? So super specific. And if I make that video, then it will help one person on this planet. And that is the person who asked. That's why I don't make these specific videos because yeah, there are just not that many people who have this problem. And that different way of learning is basically divide and conquer. So you take your big problem. Let's take these SQL migrations for a restaurant app and you break these down. So first of all, you can learn in general about SQL migrations, how these work. You can take a restaurant app, you think about, okay, what kind of features do I have? How does the UI look? You just break it down to very small problems and then you learn how to fix these small problems because you will find tons of uh, content in the internet about SQL migrations, but you will probably not find content about SQL migrations for a restaurant app. So you just learn these single topics separately and then you connect these afterwards. So that is actually the challenge, especially if you're learning that, that you take general content and you adjust it to your needs. But in the end, this is what we programmers are paid for. If it was just copy pasting stuff from Stack Overflow, which people often think is what we do all day. And I mean, yes, we do that pretty often, but the challenge is actually to take the code from Stack Overflow and adjust it to your project's needs. So this will in the end be the point where you find tons of documentations for your specific topic. You need to learn to learn with these documentations and simply then adjust the details to fit your project's needs. And then there might also be cases where there is no documentation and you just don't know how to approach a specific problem. So this typically arises when, I mean, not for rather bigger topics like SQL migrations, 
but it typically arises for very small issues your code has, maybe a specific error message or so. For that stuff, you just have to learn to look that up in Google. So usually you will find some kind of Stack Overflow post, sometimes you will find some GitHub feed, and something I also realized what's really helpful to actually learn is using GitHub repositories, because there are so many public GitHub repositories out there that might contain sections of code that are actually interesting for you and your project. That has the advantage that you actually directly see how it is imp implemented in a real project. That's a big advantage. And it also directly helps you to actually quickly understand other people's projects, which is also a skill every advanced developer definitely needs to have. So in the end, how I learn new topics nowadays. I basically just start building a project and as soon as I face issues, which is the case for pretty much every project out there, I start researching these issues. So if I if my app crashes for some reason and I don't know why it crashes and I can't tell that from the error message, I will take that error message, put it in Google and I will look up the solution. When I find the solution, then I'm, I can be pretty certain that I won't face this specific error again. So it's all really just starting to develop solving issues and that's how you learn and you might also ask yourself do i actually learn with courses yes i also do like to learn with courses but only if it's actually a rather large topic so a topic that you can't just quickly google and there's actually a great course about that then i also like to take that because in the end it saves you tons of time if you have a good course and you don't need to research everything on your own you don't need to find out how to properly use that in a project to have a good structure and stuff like that. So to sum this up, if there is a great course for your specific topic, take it, it will save you tons of time. Don't forget to actually practice what you learn there. So don't just watch the course, also build something afterwards that's kind of related. Also play around with the code um, while you build it, uh, while you follow the course, I mean, and then you will actually learn a lot with a single course. However, if there are no great courses, then you start reading documentations, you start reading blog articles, you start Googling for your issues, you start reading Stack Overflow feeds, all of that. So you basically just build a project and do that stuff for every single issue you face. If you have some kind of new framework, you just Google for it, you will see how other people implemented it, maybe in a GitHub repository, you will find a documentation with a step-by-step -step solution in the best case. And then you just have to learn how to adjust this to your project's needs. So this is in the end the challenge and the thing we all developers have to learn because this is how we actually, or why we actually get paid. So I'm pretty sure this is how 99% of the advanced developers learn, just building something and researching the issues. If you actually want to learn specifically how you can start with Android, then I strongly advise you to watch this video.